Hey guys, welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Heather and this is Sage and Stone Homestead. So I'm getting dinner ready for tonight and I figured I'd turn on the camera because this recipe for making rabbit is literally one of the easiest ways and one of the most delicious ways to prepare rabbit. I feel like it's a really good way to try out rabbit if it's your first time having rabbit. In my experience, this rabbit just falls off the bone, is super tender and is not dry in the least bit. So I've got my rabbit already cut into pieces. If you're not exactly sure how to get your rabbit into this state. Stay to the end of the video. I'm gonna link a video that I took explaining how to part out your rabbit. I've got my crock pot over here and I don't have any cream of whatever soup. Um, you can use cream of mushroom, cream of celery, cream of whatever suits your fancy. I did just make a whole bunch of bone broth and usually I thicken that up with some flour and I call it cream of chicken soup. So that's what I'm making right now to put in the crock pot with my rabbit. So all I've got in this pot right now is about half the amount of a quart sized jar of broth. And the other half I mixed with around a quarter to a third cup of flour. There's a little bit of salt and pepper in here and I'm just gonna bring this up to a boil. Now I'm just gonna stir in the other half. To add a little bit more flavor, I'm gonna sprinkle in some of this Italian dressing mix. So essentially what I have in the pot is a gravy, a nicely flavored gravy. I have used milk in the past to make this cream of soup or this gravy. The problem I have with it is I can't get milk to freeze well. And so when I do freeze this leftover gravy, which I'll do at the end, um, I don't have a good result reconstituting it when I use milk. So I choose not to use milk in it anymore. But all you do is add in a little bit of the gravy to the bottom of the crock pot so the rabbit doesn't stick put in the unseasoned rabbit pieces, and then put the rest of the gravy on top. If you get at this a little bit earlier in the day, you can put it on low for about eight to 10 hours. I'm a little bit later, right now it's noontime, so I'm going to run this on high for around four to six hours. I find that there's no difference either way, both ways work really well. And really it's that simple, now we wait. So this is what we've got. It was that easy. This is one of the bones of the rabbit. It just, it slides right out. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to get it out of the crock pot because it is so melt in your mouth tender. I think a lot of the issue that many people have when cooking rabbit is they're not taking into account that rabbit really can't be treated exactly like chicken. It's a white meat, it tastes a lot like chicken, but it acts very differently when cooked. So it's important when you're cooking rabbit to cook it basically low and slow and you want to also cook it moist. There's really not a lot of fat on a rabbit and that's what really makes chicken super easy is they've got this really nice juicy fat that helps flavor the meat as well as keep it moist. You don't really have that with rabbit. But when rabbit is cooked well, we actually prefer it over chicken. When cooked improperly, the backbone can be hard to clean up but cooked in the crock pot, low and slow. I just picked up the backbone and the tenderloin section just fell out of it. Sir, not even fell out of it, stayed on the plate. Good and clean. Side note too, this particular rabbit was about 18 months old and I have not experienced an older rabbit being tough like what can happen with chickens. This rabbit was much older than you would normally butcher a meat rabbit, but she's just as tender. So now that dinner is done and the kids are off to bed, it's time to put some of the refuse from dinner back in the freezer because I can reuse both of these things later. So I did make this creamy sauce from scratch today and I will take the leftovers. There's actually quite a lot that we used for dinner and a lot of it condensed down, but this is plenty of sauce to use again next time. So I will freeze this and then when I want to make the rabbit again, I'll thaw this out and put it on top and cook just as we did today. And I'll only do that once. I won't save it again after I've had it in the freezer one time. As far as the bones go, I do have freezer bags of bones stored in my freezer until I get enough of them to fill up my canner and make some more bone broth. When you butcher a lot of your own meat, there's a whole lot of bones that you deal with because you're dealing with whole animals. And making bone broth is one way that we can make the most out of the animals that we raise here. 
even though these bones are cooked, there actually is still a lot of nutrition locked inside of them that we can release and get out into our bone broth later on. So I had mentioned that at the end of the video, I was going to link you guys to the parting out a whole rabbit video that I made. I'm gonna put that right up here. It helps you really break down the rabbit into usable parts that are a lot less intimidating to cook. Up here, I have another recipe that I took probably close to a year and a half ago that's a little bit more involved, but it's also super delicious. This is a stovetop rabbit recipe. Oh.